Hi, in this video, I'm going to talk for a moment about balancing textures. Now, what on earth is all this about? And to whom does it apply? Well, it certainly would apply to any performer, and it would certainly be something that composers would want to think about. So first of all, let's talk about this second word, texture. And one way of thinking about texture is simply to say, well, texture is really about how sound is organized. In other words, this texture is high. This texture is low. So simply, is the texture high or is it low? Or have I got a texture that's sort of in the middle of the range as I have here? Or have I got a widely spaced texture? So I'm putting this in keyboard terms at the moment, but it could be true of an orchestral or a band score. But what if I had a texture like this? See what's happening there? My right hand is high, my left hand is low, and there's a big hole in the middle. So texture is partly about, is it high, is it low, how is it spaced out? That will be one way of looking at it. Another thing you can think about with texture, is it thick or is it thin? So for example, here's a two-part texture. I've just got one part going in the right hand and one in the left hand. That's a two-part texture. But I could have a texture that's got four parts. I could have a texture that's got more parts. So, how high, how low, how spaced, how thick, how thin, these are all things that you can talk about in relation to texture. We also talk about homophonic texture, which is what I've been playing really so far. Lots of chords, it's a kind of vertical construction. May have a melody over the top of it, but it's kind of based on a chordal construction. Or alternatively, is it a polyphonic texture where we've got kind of layered sounds, one on top of the other, kind of melodic lines all fitting together, but we've got more of a horizontal design. So all these things are defining the texture. How is the sound organized? Okay, so what's all this balancing lark about then? Well, this is about, you've got to work out in the texture, is there a particular line that maybe is a bit more important than another line? So for example, you may have a melody in the right hand if you're playing a piano piece that's accompanied by something in the left hand. In which case, whatever the dynamic marking is, you probably want to have the right hand playing a little bit you know, louder than the left hand. Then if the tune switches into the left hand, well, we need to balance the texture differently so we can draw out this tune in the left hand. Sometimes it will be the same for the whole piece of music. Sometimes it will change. How we balance a texture can have a profound effect on the success of a performance. So let me give you an example of some bad balancing of texture. Okay, so I'm gonna make up a little waltz now. The tune is in the right hand, and the left hand is gonna be fairly busy with a little accompanying idea. And I'm gonna present what's not a great balance of the texture. Now, can you hear what the problem is? The left hand is busy and it's playing a few chords, so the temptation is to play it a little bit louder, isn't it? But the poor old tune in the right hand, what happened to it? We can't really hear it, can we? Because actually, the way we need to balance that texture is to get the right hand to sing out a bit more than the left hand. So, shall we try another waltz, see if we can do a bit better? And this time, I'll see if I can get the right hand to be a bit louder than the left hand. Can you hear what a vast difference that makes? So this is just to illustrate the point that when you're playing a piece of music, you've got to think about what's going on in the texture. 
Even if you're playing a solo instrument like a violin or a clarinet or a trumpet or something, just have a think. Am I always playing the tune or are there moments when maybe the piano accompaniment has got the tune and I'm accompanying? So I need to kind of get down in the texture there and the balance of the texture, let the accompaniment come through. You know, what happens if I'm playing in an orchestra? Is my line the most important line at this point or actually am I accompanying? Or you might even be able to think, well, actually somebody's got the main tune and I've got a little bit of a thing that's supporting their tune. So I'm not the most important thing and I'm not the least important thing, but maybe I'm sitting in the middle. So you might be able to balance a texture on more than two levels and watch out for where the texture changes. If you're a composer, you'll be wanting to think about balancing textures in the score, you know. It's not really gonna work, is it, if you've got that little waltz melody being played by a solo violin, and the left-hand bit that I've just played is being played by the entire brass section. Uh, it's not gonna balance at all, is it? So we need to think when we're scoring for any ensemble, how the balance is gonna work. For instrumental music, for vocal music, in any style of music. So. An important thing to think about that quite often people maybe don't spend quite enough time on and quite often the thing that is the loudest is the thing that's moving fastest or is the hardest thing to play or the thing that's got the most notes in it and actually that's often not the most important thing. So have a think about the music that you're playing and the music that you're writing and try and work out at any given moment where the most important part is and what's accompanying it so that you can get sorted out on balancing your textures. And you'll be amazed how much musical refinement it brings to the end result.